This hands-on video is part of a video course called Understanding Docker and Docker Compose 100% hands-on. If you like this video, check out the link in the description below. For more videos like this, subscribe to this channel and give a thumbs up. Now, let's go. In this lecture, we are going to do something fun and very, very important if you are a developer. I'm going to run a command again, and then I'm going to talk about what this command actually means. Now let's start with docker run dash dash rm dash v, and then pwd double point slash my wall ubuntu slash bin slash bash dash c ls dash lha slash my wall slash my file dot txt. Let me run this. It's done. Nothing happened. Docker PS, nothing here. But I have here in my Windows prompt, and that's very important to understand. I'm here in Windows. I have a new file called my file dot txt. And if I open it with my editor, then I have the contents of my Linux host or my Linux container. So how is that possible? Okay, let's check it out. The docker run command with rm removes the image. So after running this image and the process stopped, the spin bash process stopped, then the image will, uh, the container will be removed. But what does this dash v do? This dash v says uh, volume mounting. And with this one, you can mount something, some directory from your host into a directory in your guest. And pwd means nothing else than the current directory. So in Windows, I could also say uh, c double point backslash users backslash Toma. And this would be the same as uh, this dollar sign curly braces pwd curly braces closed. And the current directory will be available in my Ubuntu as my wall. So now I'm going to ls, lha, the, the, the root of my Ubuntu, but I'm going to write the output of this one into my wall slash my file.txt. And my wall is the directory on my host, mounted into my guest, meaning it's going to write a file, my file.txt into my current directory where I'm in starting this Docker command. Okay, let me clear this up here and let's do something fun, something actually useful sometimes something I don't have installed on my Windows machine is RAR and sometimes I just want to compress or decompress something and this is where Docker containers can be really useful if you need some software which you don't have installed and you don't want to install the software because maybe it's bloated or maybe you don't know the package but you still need the functionality just use a Docker container for this one little functionality this is where Docker run really excels now, let me show you Docker Hub before we do that. With Docker Hub, you get access to um, a lot of different images, as you've seen before. And the images are created from Docker files and then uploaded there. We're going to do this later in the, in the course. Um, but I found this one image. It's called uh, Clutchel slash RAR. Clutchel is the uh, repository name works very much like GitHub. If you come from, uh, if you're familiar with Git, then it shouldn't be much to a surprise. But instead of files, it's hosting images. And this is the guy. I don't know this guy, but I thank him very much for a small container to run RAR compression utility on files in a current working directory. Okay, the next thing would be a look at the Docker file. And I know that we didn't discuss Docker files yet. I still want to. Uh, show you line by line this Docker file because it's very, very easy to understand. Uh, a Docker file always starts with a from line. And the from line say, says, what is the image that we're going to use in this Docker file, uh, in this in this image? So in this case, it's coming from Alpine. And Alpine is a Ubuntu. It's the smallest 
image of Ubuntu is like five megabytes large. It has nothing included. It's the bare minimum image of Ubuntu. And then it's going to uh, run a couple of commands. For example, uh, downloading this tar GZ and then unpackaging it and then making it and then moving it into a directory so that we in user local bin rar we have an, a file, a program, which we can execute. And then we say entry point. And entry point is also important because entry point will let us execute uh, a Docker container without ex actually specifying uh, a specific process that we want to execute. This is going to be a process that is executed if we don't tell the container what to execute. So the entry point will be rar. Let me demonstrate this. And it's very important to understand this entry point. Let me run docker run dash dash rm because I don't want to have this container cluttered in my uh, system. Clutchel slash rar. And uh, for you as well, you will see it's unable to find the image. It will download the image and then it will output the help file from rar. Who guessed that? And with this one equipped, we can now compress and uncompress files in our system, both in our guest, in our Docker container. And if we're going to map intelligently our current directory, then we can actually compress our myfile.txt into a myrar.rar. Let me just clean up here a little bit. Clear. And let's run a command docker run dash dash rm dash v. And again, I want to use the current directory. And I want to map it into a files directory. Clutchel slash rar. And then I want to use the a command for creating an archive. And I want this archive to be created in my rar dot rar. And then I want to add the file files, my file.txt. Let's run this. And we see the output from the process, which is run inside this container. So as you see here, I don't have to uh, specify as a specific uh, executable file here. It's just directly executing the RAR file the RAR process inside my container with the entry point. And then it's executing this and then uh, it's adding to my slash files slash my rar.rar the file my file.txt and slash files is mounted to the current directory in my uh, host file. That means when I do a ls then I see my my rar here. I also tried before so it's a my rar second but I can see this right now over here the file that I just created. All right, let me give you one more flag, which is very important to understand. That's a W flag. Okay, let me clear this up here. Clear. Okay, let me run the exact same command again, but with a different flag at the beginning, okay? We still stay with a dash V, uh, and then we add a dash W and say uh, files. And dash W means it's a working directory. And the working directory is like CDing into the directory. So instead of ending up in the root directory, uh, when the container starts, you are already CD'd, you're already inside the files directory. That means you don't need to say you want to a uh, specific directory anymore because you are already inside this directory. So when we are doing this, it's still working because uh, inside our files directory, we have both the my file and then we have the myrar, and when I do an ls, then I have this over here again. It's just overwritten. All right, and that's it for this lecture. Again, we have the exercise attached to it, and I kind of suggest you run through that and, and really digest what is going on here. Um, it is not as transparent for beginners as it should be, but once you get a hang of it, it is really practical. I can really suggest you do that. All right, in the next lecture, we are going to talk about using different 
versions of your favorite development environment that might be PHP or anything else. We are going to talk about PHP uh, with Docker images step by step. So stay tuned and I'll see you in the next lecture.